watching The Buck Stops here and I'm Barkha Dutt. With less than 80 days left for the first day of voting to take place, that's right, 2014's elections are almost here. On The Buck Stops here tonight, we're kicking off with our special election programming, Politics Unlimited. You'll get it all here in 60 minutes. The interviews, reports from on the ground, the key players, the statistics, the news that matters. Let's get started tonight with our main headlines on Politics Unlimited. Well, first, Narendra Modi's Jayanti tax jive has certainly raised emissions in the political environment. Jayanti Natarajan is calling Narendra Modi's charge baseless, says Modi is trying to intimidate her into silence. The BJP is defending Narendra Modi. The BJP says under Jayanti Natarajan, environment was a red ministry and she must explain how so many clearances of files only took place after her exit. The Congress is saying Narendra Modi must prove his charge. What did he mean by Jayanti tax? Did he mean that there was a price attached to the clearance of every file? And if he can't prove this, he must apologise. As the Congress and the BJP are sparring as usual, the ascendant Aam Aadmi Party is dealing with challenges of its own. After the chaos at the first Janta Darbar, Arvind Kejriwal has said he has abandoned the idea of that kind of Janta Darbar. He'll now be taking questions online and be meeting people once a week. And in another familiar sense, in fact, a deja vu almost, Prashant Bhushan's press conference was disrupted by right-wing activists again asking him to clarify his views on Jammu and Kashmir and the Naxal issue. On the same day, and there's a lot that's happened today, which is why we're calling it Politics Unlimited, the Aam Aadmi Party government has moved to scrap FDI in retail in Delhi. On the program today, we'll be asking, is Aam Aadmi Party left, right or centre? And does it even matter? The leader of the opposition, Arun Jaitley, is saying the Congress is demoralised, but the Aam Aadmi Party is a victim of its own style. The question on Politics Unlimited tonight, will New Age politics be determined by ideology or personality? Also coming up later on the programme, talking about personalities, there's one personality that's taking on Rahul Gandhi in the battleground of Amethi. And he said he's not coming home till the elections are over. Kumar Vishwas will be a political newsmaker tonight. He's coming up later on the programme. क्या एक प्रत्याशी को अधिकार नहीं है कि वो आपसे किसी मुकाम पर बैठकर बहस कर सके अमेठी के बारे में मैं उन्हें आमंत्रित करता हूं एनडीटीवी के स्टूडियो आए कांग्रेस मुख्यालय में मुझे बुला लें अमेठी के किसी चौराहे पे आ जाएं अपने समर्थकों के बीच आ जाएं बस वो साथ में अपने अजय माकन साहब जनार्दन द्विवेदी एंड कंपनी को ना लाएं वो आए बात करें मैं भी बात कर लूंगा वो भी बात कर लेंगे लोग समझ लेंगे कि हमारी इन चीजों के बारे में समझ कितनी है हम दोनों में क्या अंतर है और मेरे अंदर कितना दर्द है और कंसर्न है उनके अंदर कितना दर्द और कंसर्न है a big debate on the buck stops here tonight. Will it be ideology, issues or eventually personality that dominates and determines the outcome of 2014? This, of course, as the Aam Aadmi Party is confronted with one common question from both the BJP and the Congress. Is Arvind Kejriwal's party left, right or centre? And does it even matter? Let's introduce our panel this evening. We're joined by Jayanti Natarajan, former environment minister, somebody who has come under personal and fierce attack from Narendra Modi. Also joining us from the BJP's Subramaniam Swami, joining us from Chennai tonight, a leader with the party. Joining us from Ahmedabad tonight, Malika Sarabhai. She's, of course, recently joined the Aam Aadmi Party. We're also joined from Mumbai today by Medha Patkar. Medha Patkar has announced just today that she will be offering support to the Aam Aadmi Party, with me in the studio, Ashok Malik, senior journalist and columnist. And also on the program today, Sunil Alak, founder of SK Advisors. Jayanti Natarajan, if I may start with you, since we are asking whether it is ideology or issues of, of impropriety or eventually personality that will dominate this election, what do you make of the fact that Mr. Modi has now trained his guns at you. You have, of course, said that this is an attempt to intimidate you. But this attack has been accompanied by media reports, uh, for example, in the Indian Express today, that has suggested that 119 signed files by you were withheld. They're, of course, contrasting this with your successor, Virappa Moili, who has uh, cleared 1.5 lakh crores worth of projects since he took over. What do you make of the fact that Mr. Modi attacked you, Jayanti? And do you believe that you're actually being attacked by friendly fire? within your own party you know um, uh, Barka let me start at the beginning um, Indian Express has been running a motivated campaign against me for what reason I don't know 
I think uh, uh, the public needs to know. Why do you call it motivated? That That's a very sweeping statement to make about a media house. <coughs> because uh, uh, first of all, from day go, uh, if it uh, any story relating to the Ministry of Environment, they always imputed motives to me. Uh, on the morning of the uh, reshuffle of the cabinet one year ago, they published prominent, and I knew two days before that, that uh, these stories were going to come. They published stories that uh, various uh, business houses, various people wanted me to be removed right on the morning of the reshuffle. And everything uh, that's put over there is put in a wrong and negative light. So it, I call it a motivated campaign. The fact of the matter, Barka, if you talk about the files that you're now saying, the only ministry in government of India, as far as I know, under environment law, if a file is not cleared within 60 days, mm. it is deemed to be cleared. That is, the person who is who's the project proponent mm. can assume that the project has been allowed. Now, this is uh, inbuilt into environment law, into the environment impact assessment legislation. So, if I had been wrongly sitting on something, then it was open to any project proponent to assume that deemed clearance had been given. This is something which we introduced, not I, my, uh, uh, people before me, have introduced into the environment law to make sure that environment clearances are done in a timely way. And okay. Next, the, uh, all, all proceedings of the environment ministry, all discussions, all minutes are put up on the website. It is for anybody to follow. So these signed and, files, uh, on these the website, signed files Jayanti, these 119 signed files held back according to the Indian Express, what were they according to you? I have no idea. I have no idea what they are talking about. I, I mean, I, I would have to know which file. They could have, Barka, there could be, file, uh, for example, on an average, if it's such a huge ministry that we receive, uh, sometimes I might receive 80 files in one day, sometimes I might receive 20 files. And if I'm traveling the backlog uh, for three or four days or a week, if I'm away, uh, for example, at a climate change conference, could even be 200 files which I cleared as soon as I could. Second, each file related to complex issues. An industry wanted clearance. It needs coastal zone But do you, but do you believe, do you needs, believe uh, before I take this to Subramaniam no, Swami, do you believe that there are those no, in your own party? Do you believe there are those in your own no, party who are gunning for you? Because they are going to point to the contrast with Mr. Virapa Moili, and, and who, who has cleared 65 no, Barka, projects in but two then, you know, without, no, but these are not generalities, Barka. You need to go into each specific case, and therefore my direct answer is that if there, are, if there is any irregularity in any file, people, look, Mr. Swami is sitting on this panel. I know Mr. Swami for years. He goes to court. If he feels something is wrong, he takes the person to court. And I suggest that if I've done anything wrong, people should move uh, 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 proceedings against me, make specific charges instead of shooting and scooting. Okay, so Prabhupada Swami, the Congress says either prove Mr. Modi's charges against Jayanti Natarajan or apologize. <coughs> yes, we will. We, I am going to go, go to court, but the person caught will not be Jayanti. It's, uh, it's, it's, he has been what is called in the American phrase, fall guy, or maybe I should say fall gal. Uh, she has uh, like a dutiful uh, party uh, worker. She has obeyed... Uh, instructions coming from higher up and uh, therefore uh, this has happened and now if you ask me what proof you have you have to go back to your own uh, uh, channel and see when the 2g matter i raised by a letter to the prime minister you brought me on the channel on the program and asked me what evidence you had and i was condemned by all congress spokesmen at that time having lacking evidence but ultimately it all came out now i would say today this is also a major scandal the word Jainti tax is used uh, in popular parlance in the corporate houses today. Hmm. And that is why uh, we had heard it. And what does we, it mean? Uh, it what does this phrase Jainti and tax mean? What did Mr. It Modi mean that, by it? It means that no file, it means that no file will be cleared unless uh, a sanction came for it uh, from above and there was a price attached to it. That's what was Jainti tax. It doesn't mean it went to the Jainti's pocket. Okay. Jayanti, I'm going to allow you quickly to respond that's to this and I'm going to open up the conversation. No, Swami, that's the fact, the fact no, Swami, of the matter is that you have effectively been, accused, effectively been accused of financial irregularity. That's what Jayanti tax is. There's no pussyfooting around this. And that's what Subramaniam Swami no, is saying, that the money didn't go to you, it went to somebody else. 
No, but that's absolutely untrue. I'm saying let, let there be one case that comes out where this has happened. It's absolutely yes, and totally it and completely untrue. Okay, now here's the question. That there will be a case, Yanti. You'll have a chance. Meda Patkar, having recently joined the Ahmad, uh, or so, at least offered to support the Ahmadmi Party, I want to ask you to weigh in on this debate. I have asked you this because you are, of course, uh, an environmental activist. Now, here we have a very curious debate going on when Narendra Modi is targeting Jayanti Natarajan, saying that there was a tax attached to the clearance of every file. What's not clear is, till this date, why is there such a contrast between Virappa Moili and Jayanti Natarajan? What are the instructions, if there are any? What is this Jayanti tax? Before I ask you about the larger ideological cohesion or lack of it in the Ahmadmi party. What do you make of this dispute over Jayanti tax between the Congress and the BJP? No, as people's movements, we have seen that uh, the environmental law is many times violated while giving the clearance to various projects. And then by hook or crook, when the corporates or the project authorities get the clearance, they don't complain about anything. Mm. And only when the law is applied strictly by someone like either Jayanti Natarajan or her predecessor Jairam Ramesh, then they come out with complaints. I hope Subramanyam Swami will really look into the, uh, uh, the issue and not take a position without going through project by project. Because the tax can be taxing the corporates uh, as the polluters pay principle. The tax could be not allowing the project to go ahead when there is violation or the public hearing has given a verdict of the people by the law and not against the law, but against the project maybe. Mm. And of course, for her to or any environment minister, to follow according to section 3 to 5 of the Environment Protection Act 1986, mm. that the environment should be protected, there has to be some further So you're saying, you're there saying, are you're saying Jayanti amongst Natarajan, the ministries. You're saying Jayanti Natarajan was punished for doing her job. Narendra Modi is saying she was punished because there was a tax attached to her clearance of files. Yes, because it is Modi's politics now. You see, up to 2014, every single aspiring contestant wants their maximum projects to be sanctioned by hook or crook. They don't care about the displaced people as in the case of Sardar Sarovar. They make false statements claiming benefits and not coming out with the real valuations of cost. They don't care for nature at all. Okay. So in that context, although they, their talks are about the people's issues, saving nature, real development, they are anti-development. And hence, protecting environment is a part of development planning. That must be understood. Let, let me, let me, and if let, anything is wrong has gone through, yeah. then let 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 her uh, be you know Jayanti, charged for that, and she will reply. Jayanti, you haven't answered one question. Right Jayanti, you haven't answered one question. Why is there such a contrast between the speed at which you cleared projects and Virappa Moili has cleared pro projects? And do you think there's any merit to Subramaniam Swami saying that you've been made the fall gal? No, no to both. Uh, Mr. Moili is a very senior and experienced minister and politician. I'm sure he'll apply the laws and make sure but that they are followed properly. But isn't it true that you had major differences I with him? Isn't it true that you had major differences with him on a host of issues? Uh, and and, and, and in, in some ways, this is payback time for him as well. Or is it? Or it could be argued that Rahul Gandhi and his speech at Fiki, where he said an environment minister cannot be arbitrary about clearances, was talking about you. You know, an environment minister is not arbitrary because there are rules that we have to follow. And I want to point out that only 8% projects come to the central environment minister. 92% are cleared at the state level. And also that the delays all happen at the state level. So I don't believe that there's absolutely any truth in the fact, uh, as has been uh, uh, made out in such great detail, that there were delays and clearances. There were projects that I had serious uh, uh, reservations about uh, uh, where I felt that uh, you know when, if they were big dams uh, they may total, very badly affect uh, in a holistic way the entire river upstream and downstream and uh, these were projects that we had to keep on discussing and okay. arrive at a common consensus uh, but these were genuine differences which were discussed within cabinet which obviously I can't disclose over here and whatever differences I had I put down on paper and finally, a consensus decision was taken. 
Okay, let's look at what's happened today, the developments, the political developments today. The political developments, of course, is this political storm over the Jayanti tax. You have Medha Patkar saying, I'm going to support the Ahmadmi party. You have Arvind Kejriwal saying, Jan Sabhas will no longer be held uh, in the same way that he had once conceived. He will be taking online questions and meeting people once a week. You also have Arvind Kejriwal's government writing a letter saying, FDI in retail will not be allowed in Delhi. The question is being asked again and again, is the Aam Aadmi Party left, right or center and does it even matter? Malika Sarabhai, does it matter to you? There are those who are saying that essentially this is a left of left party. But I just, you know, uh, if you look at uh, Kumar Vishwas and, and I've been interviewing him, he says, well, look, I would place myself for national security matters on the right of center. I see Prashant Bhushan as being the, on the left of center and I see Arvind Kejriwal as being the center that guides us. But when you look at the economics, when you look at FDI and retail taken back, for example, would you agree with the classification that the party you've just joined is a left of center party? No, I don't think, I think it's early to say what the party is. It's hmm. a lot of the different people have different positions on it. And uh, on, not only on FDI and economic issues, but also on much, uh, much more sort of um, general issues like the position of women or, or nuclear things or, you know, all of this. I don't think there is a party position yet and I'm not sure whether they want a party position. Hmm. Is that viable? <laughs> is that viable for a party to not, because then it would be a group and not a party? I don't know. We'll have to see because, I mean, if you had said, is AAP winning the Delhi election viable six months ago, everybody would have said no. Hmm. But why did you decide to support this party? I think what is clear is that there are fundamentals on... I beg your pardon? Why did you decide to support it? Was it for reasons of ideology or was it for reasons of identifying with the person who leads it, let's say Arvind Kejriwal? Why did you decide to support it? If the ideological position is not clear, why did somebody like you Be and why did somebody like Veda decide I to support it? It's the it's the most... I can't, I can't talk about anybody else, but I will tell you why I decided to support it. I think it's the most positive thing that's happened in our democracy for many years, and we need to give it a chance. We need to strengthen it. It is one party where it is still a work in progress, so maybe we can bring in ideas to it and help. Because nothing else has ever had the openness and taking democracy back to people that they are offering. Okay, and so of course they'll make mistakes, of course there'll be lots of issues where they'll fall on their noses, but it's still better than any of the entrenched parties. Sunil Alag, the economic debate that is taking shape in this election, and that's where it, it, you, you see left, right and centre gets identified in two ways, socially and economically. Economically, something very interesting is happening. The, the same Jayanti Natarajan's exit is being seen one way by Medha Patkar, quite another way by Narendra Modi. The same FDI and retail issues, I don't know if the BJP can target the Ahmadmi party for that because the BJP was also opposed to it. So what's going on in this election? Has ideology and ideological cohesion really taken a back seat? Has it become difficult to identify politicians in these slots of left, right and centre anymore? Sunil? No, you know, like as far as I'm concerned, I have made it very clear what is Modi's economic policy is that I must earn first. I must get investment in, I must set up factories which give employment, I should generate income which can then build infrastructure. The ARP approach is let's distribute the money first, we will see later on where the money comes in from because they are not clear about it at all. Now when you discuss it at a Delhi level, this could work because ultimately what does the state government have other than sales tax or octroi or a few other taxes which they can play around with. Hmm. But when you go to the Lok Sabha and you are now saying that I want to influence national policy, then corruption alone cannot be the issue. People cannot vote for a party which does not have a clear ideology, whether on how to deal with Kashmir, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, on how to deal with taxation, because Kumar Vishwas and all the indications are, I want to tax the rich, I want to tax the middle income group and give to the poor. They are not, they're not coming out and saying it. People must know right now what is your economic policy what is, and then vote accordingly. I'm not at all. I call it Marxist it, to an extreme. They are employing vigilantes in areas to look at. That's Mao Zedong's Red Army. They are looking at, let me give the freebies first on water, electricity. 
I want the state to to audit private firms. They're beginning with electricity. Mm. Where will it go? We don't know. Now the question is: Once you understand this, I am not saying Marxism is bad, but vote for AAP when you want Marxism to come back to India, which, according to me, will lead to anarchy. Okay. So I want Modi okay. has been anti against corruption. Everyone else. So yeah. I am wanting a clarity on economic policy and philosophy. But, but my, question, my question, my question at the moment, my question. They cannot give me a chance to work it out. I've got your point, but Ashok Malik, my question at the moment would be: Does any party have have that ideological clarity? You broadly know where to position the Congress and the BJP, but when it comes to economics, and like I said, whether it's how the debate around Jayanti's exit from the Environment Ministry has been constructed, where you'll have Medha Patkar and the BJP seeing it in completely different mm -hmm. ways. One will. See her as the red ministry, as the BJP has called her. Medha will say, "Oh, she's been punished for doing her job." That's yeah. that. That's one divide. FDI and retail. Arvind Kejriwal has has taken it back from Delhi, but the BJP opposed it anyway. <laughs> so, what is is there an ideological yeah, anarchy to this election? One minute, Sunil. I'm asking Ashok. Yeah. See, two things here. No, no, there's a difference. Oh, uh, so, Subramanian Swami. Swami okay. Could I speak? One second, Subramanian Swami. Give me a second. Yeah, Ashok. Two things here. One, if you look at the BJP's economic policies at the macro level, at the central level, between 2004 and and 2013 or 2014, frankly, uh, they pretty much follow what the Congress has been doing without without really opposing it. Yeah. The whole problem. Promise of this election for BJP supporters or those to to broadly to the centre right yeah. is that Modi and his economics is somehow different from uh, what the BJP has done over the past ten years. He has articulated it to some degree. Perhaps he needs to do it more to distinguish himself from the BJP's economic uh, policies mm. or, or statements, mm. the Congress's economic policies and statements, and the AAP, AAP's uh, policies and statements. But I'd like to go back to something you said at the beginning: Is this an election about ideology or about personality? I think it's a bit of both. Mr Modi is the key personality of this election there's no doubt about that but how do you how do you define well, that well he is the tallest personality of this election he is the one people are trying to beat or, or <coughs> get or, or ride on the coattails of yeah. but there are people who oppose Mr Modi who oppose him in terms of his personality who oppose him ideologically also yeah. they have a right to yeah. right? uh what is interesting is many of them especially in urban india have decided that aap is perhaps in recent days a better vehicle to thwart him or to stop him Than the, Congress, defeat him, but than the Congress, than the Congress, <laughs> and that is what is interesting. Which is why a lot of people who have a long engage, history of engagement in polit with politics. But would you agree with Sunil Alag's cat categorization that these are essentially Marxists? Well, they, they are disturbing. I mean, Kumar Vishwas is not a Marxist. Well, Kumar Vishwas is not, but the manner in which the, the AAP has used its cadre to come into hospitals, to come into uh, the government, is actually reminiscent of my old days in Calcutta.